Basically, the next, the next thing on, on a kind of that triangle is enzymes. Okay, enzymes are really unique because we all know that enzymes help digest food. That's good. Got to get the food digested. And the body's smart too. The body has that as the number one priority. But little do we know that the enzymes that are in our body to begin with, these are called metabolic enzymes. And they're not meant to just digest food. They're actually meant to run our organs for many, many, many years. Longevity. You know, it you know, we'll talk about that in a second. But it turns out that the enzymes are destroyed at 105 to 118 degrees, which means the strangest species on the planet, the only one that cooks their food, is basically enzyme deficient from, from birth, pretty much. Enzyme deficient from birth. The result of this is the body must then rob metabolic enzymes, which are used to run the organs, the glands, the tissues, long into life. Instead, must use them up at an accelerated rate just to digest food, just to maintain the status quo. Okay, so obviously we have two choices. Get strange like a hippie, get on your hands and knees, start eating grass in the backyard and hope the neighbors don't see, you know? Or say, hey, is there something we can add? Something so potent, something so rich in enzymes that it can replete a lifetime of enzyme depletion. Is there such a material? And the answer is yes. And it is a plant, comes from nature. It's got 140 enzymes more than any other plant. And some of these enzymes are only available in this, in this plant, which is called, in Latin, Marinda citrifolia, also nicknamed noni. How many people here have ever heard of the noni plant? Okay, so it's been used traditionally for thousands of years, but the thing is, those traditional benefits, although touted as being present in almost all of the material that's been served up so far as noni, at least if, if you're not living in Tahiti or Hawaii, it's been pasteurized, pasteurization, destroys the vast majority of those enzymes. Well, come on now, if we're gonna be spending our money on it, why don't we get the full bang? That's my, 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 my kind of view of it. So um, what we did is we basically brought you the full bang. We found a cold process method that brings you 100% enzyme retention and puts it with certain warming spices that have been shown to dilate the blood vessels, oxygenate the brain, get the enzymes in deep so that your organs can take maximum utilization of them and begin to refurbish those organs and endocrine glands and tissues. That's what it's all about. So our, our products, like basically Elements for Life, you know, I've been introduced to somebody who's, you know, the visionary founder of this company, but really the company arose in the wake of a commitment that when I found some one piece of this equation, which I haven't talked about yet, and it was the connection between rare platinum group elements and our experience of life, but when I got a hold of that, I realized that every single human being, man, woman, and child, deserves to have access to these materials and that an abundant body, an abundant life will always have access to these, these things. So really, the company is basically a support system, is a side effect of people who are passionate about transformation. I personally, like, I attract transformation artists. I find myself in the presence of greatness always. That is my affirmation. And to me, every single person here knows hundreds of people, if not thousands of people, directly or indirectly, who are hungering and thirsting for transformation, mentally, emotionally, physically, either from a health challenge to baseline point of view, or from baseline to, I want to take it to the next level, right? I want to take it to the next level. We have the fastest, some of the fastest athletes that are on our team. Some of the most amazing people from around the world are realizing that, you know what? These are the principles. You put these into place, and one, you don't have to tell yourself no, but coffee, cigarettes, tea, nicotine, all these things begin to dissipate. Not that we have to judge them, but what is that worth? A couple hundred dollars of superfoods every month, and suddenly you're saving five, six, seven, eight hundred dollars in things that really didn't serve us at the deepest, most core level. Speaking of deepest, most core, I want to give thanks to um, the Center for Spiritual Development and really grok that word center, you know, literally the center for development and how often we seem to be a little bit divided. Like maybe I want to be healthy, but I keep reaching for that Ben and Jerry's ice cream. Sorry, Ben and Jerry's, you're my favorite too. But anyway, um, you know, you reach for it. There is some bit of conflict and when we get to the final center, we realize that there's no conflict, there's no dichotomy, there's no 
confusion, there is a single direction, and that's how motivation happens. Not by resisting all the other things that are pulling us, but becoming so in love with what is drawing us. And so we give people a community, a platform, to begin to elicit their highest potential. Like, literally, yeah, sure, you can, you can, you can get your superfoods for free. Sure, you can you know, get them for wholesale through this company. Sure, we, pe we have people earning you know, executive level incomes. But the thing that can never be put a price tag on is the relationships. And that literally, just like our brain uses a network, just like the forest transfers nutrients from the outer edge of the forest, where the new trees get the sunlight, and the mushrooms actually have a relationship with the roots all the way to the inner center of the forest, and they feed the big trees. And so this is kind of neat that we all play a role, and we never quite know what our role in life is until we have enough energy to achieve it. So the point is, is if we want to be in a position where we're helping people plug into their highest potential and watching them bloom like the flowers, then we've got to raise their energy. That means ending a war, a very expensive <coughs> war. And it's a war on the internal biological level where the cells are in competition for resources, hair, blood, bone, skin, all fighting for the same molecules just so we can you know, continue to look good till we're 40 or 50 or 60, whatever. It depends on how well we took care of us. So we've taken it for granted that old age equals wrinkly, prune, tired, diseased. How, how many of us have kind of been raised in that paradigm? Old, old equals, you know, kind of on the decline, right? Yeah, so we've, we've all experienced that, but when we look at nature, we see that we're the shortest lived species, pretty much. Now, you say shortest lived species, animals live shorter periods of time than humans, isn't that true? And that's true in some cases, but if you look at like, um, say a parrot, anybody yeah. here know how long parrots live? Okay. Hundreds of years, 300 years, parrots, okay? Whales, whales, they live 250 to 300 years, okay? And if you go into like turtles, they're living thousands of years, 1,500 years. Trees, thousands of years. We, the most complex species on the planet, dying of disease at the age of 80 or 90, what's going on there, you know? That's, that's interesting to me. And so when we look at further studies that show even the shorter lived creatures, like say a horse, they live 25 to 30 years, but what does that represent? That's actually about 10 times birth to physical maturity. So if you take birth times, you know, however long it takes to become fully mature, in just about any species, multiply it times 10, you're gonna get somewhere in the neighborhood of its average lifespan for that species. So the point is, Human beings being fully developed, wisdom, teeth, bone structure, all that, somewhere around you know, the age of 24. Even if you say you're fully mature when you get your driver's license, at the age of 18, we should still be living to 180. 90 years old is what we consider to be a long time. Now, it turns out, like I'm just starting to study this stuff about three or four years ago, and so I started looking and finding that there are indeed cultures on the planet right now that live 120 to 140 years. How many people are familiar with these cultures? Awesome. Yeah. And so if you know the research, they're claiming that part of the reason that they're able to maintain this is one, they've got extremely mineral dense, nutrient dense produce because it's watered from volcanic or um, glacial runoff soils. And the, these are high in what we call platinum group elements. Remember we talked about the principles of life. We talked about alkalinity, enzymes, and rare platinum group elements. What are these things and what do they do?